So the distance formula is something that's a lot more mathematical than what we've experienced so far. And it looks pretty intimidating. It's not that bad. It's very related to the Pythagorean theorem, if you remember that from right triangles, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And let's talk about some of the math involved here. And, and if we go ahead and follow some habits, some good habits, we'll be successful all the time. So first, note that there's the whole entire thing is in a square root. Note the squares. And then you'll note that we have two points. We have point number one and point number two. And what happens is that we're subtracting the x values and then we're subtracting the y values. That's what's happening. Conceptually speaking, we subtract the x values, we subtract the y values. We just make sure that we do it in the same order. Another feature is that after subtracting, we squared. So what this means is, at some point, if we square, if we get a positive answer in here, or we get a negative answer in here, it doesn't matter because when we square it, we're going to get a positive answer. And then we're going to add this positive answer to this positive answer. We will be square rooting a positive number. So this is, will always be a positive value at the end. Our answer will be a positive value, and we will not have a negative value at all. So part A, we're going to go from A to B. So we're going to make this point number one. And when I make this one point number two. And in other words, this is x1. This is y1. This is x2. This is y2. So we're going to just take a moment to identify things. Okay? The formula will be the same regardless. So I'm going to go ahead and make it like this. And I'm going to show you a good habit to do. So even before you pop numbers in, set it up like this. Okay? Just make it a template. All you're going to do is fill in the numbers. Notice my use of parentheses. I have extra parentheses there to make sure that we don't make any mistakes with negatives. So x2 goes in the first spot. That's a negative 4. x1 goes in this spot, which is a negative 1 y2 goes in this spot, and y1 goes in this spot. So if you really are careful about what you're doing, there isn't much thinking to happen. You just need to go ahead and identify what you've been given, label them x's and y's, point 0.1, point 0.2, make the equation, leave some spaces, leave some blanks with parentheses, and then drop them in. So doing some algebra here, this negative 4 comes down. We have a minus a negative, which makes a positive one. This is a 3. This There's nothing fancy going on here. It's just a 3 minus 1. We then go ahead and further simplify. Negative 4 plus 1 is a negative 3. 3 minus 1 is a 2. I mentioned earlier that because this is squared, it'll take care of the negatives. So if I go ahead and further simplify, this negative 3 squared is a 9. 2 squared is a 4, and I get square root of 13 as the answer. Now, if we put this in the calculator and we round it to the nearest tenths, we're going to get that this is approximately 3.6. So get comfortable with getting the radical answer, but also be comfortable with getting the decimal value and rounding if necessary. If you're given a graph, May I suggest an alternate way to do this? But this only works if you're given a graph. First, let's look at uh, the x. So if I want to go from he this point to this point, how many do I travel on the x? One, two, three. And then how many from this point do I travel to up the y-axis? I go one, two. And so <laughs> this ends up giving us 9 plus 4, which is, of course, the radical 13, which we previously got with all the algebra. Now, I know you're excited about this faster way. Why didn't I show you this first? Because that every problem has a graph. But if you are given the graph, you can simply apply the concept that you know of slope, right, which is rise over run. How much did you go over? 
how much did you go up? Right? This is the x values. These are the y values. Okay? You can get away with this if you have a graph. From A to B will be the same distance as from B to A. We discussed this in the last lecture video in reference to absolute value and distance traveling uh, with the segment addition postulate. Remember the Georgia map? So it's going to be the same answer. So you could do the math again if you want and you'd get the same answer, radical 13, which is approximately 3.6. From A to C, now please recognize that when we say from A to C, this is what we mean. We mean this line segment AC, okay? Let's start off with writing out the whole formula, the whole template, right? Notice that the square is outside the parentheses. And we're going from A to C, so this is gonna be my second point. This will be my first point. Identify the x's and the y's. May I suggest pause the video, set up set up this problem, see how far you can get, see if you get the same answer that I'm going to get. Go ahead and pause it. Try it. So that's the setup you should have gotten. We'll simplify. So the three comes down. It's always this that we have to kind of be careful of. So it's a minus a negative one is a plus one. Over here we have a two and a minus one. Let's further simplify. 3 plus 1 is 4. 2 minus 1 is 1. That's 16, right? 4 squared is 16, not 8. 4 squared is 16, plus 1 squared, which is 1. That's 17. Putting this in a calculator, we get a rough approximation of about 4.1 if we round to the nearest tenths. If we pause to consider for a moment that what we're saying is the distance from A to C, so that line segment AC, is actually, so this distance right here, is actually slightly bigger than from A to B. From C to D, so just for kicks, because I do have a graph, let me do this from a graphical point of view. So remember, we're going from, from C to D, or from D to C. So from C to D. How do I get there? Well, let's talk about the x first. I go 1 over on the x, and then I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3 on the y. I would challenge you to, if you really want mastery, do all these problems both ways. Do it with the formula from scratch, with all the algebra, and then do it graphically and get the same answer both times. If you can do that, you've mastered this topic. So then we get uh, square root of 1 plus 9, which is square root of 10. And if I put this in a calculator and round to the nearest tenths, I get approximately 3.2. Now, if you're not aware, this little symbol I keep putting everywhere, that means approximately. You know that this means equals. From B to D, this is a very long segment. We're going from B to D. Try it out. Set it up. See what you get. Here's the setup, noting that this is x2, this is x1, this is y2, this is y1. We don't even think, we just go ahead and drop them in the right spots, keeping in mind the use of parentheses. We have a 2, and then this minus and the negative is a plus 4. And then we have a negative 1. And this is a minus and a positive, so it's a negative 3, minus 3. If we clean this up a bit more, we have a 6, and we have a negative 4. Interesting. I'm going to go ahead and continue the problem over here. I'm sorry. So I get 36, right? 6 squared. That's 6 times 6. And then negative 4 squared is not a negative 16, because it's negative 4 times a negative 4, which is a positive 16. If we go ahead and add those up, we get 52. And if you were to put this in your handy-dandy calculator, you're going to get an approximate value of 7.2 if we round to the nearest tenths. Now, what do we notice about the length of AB and BD? So we said that AB, if you recall, AB was 3.6. We're saying that BD is 7.2. So 
So we're doing part F right now. And if we do the segment addition postulate for this entire segment right here, we get that BA plus AD is equal to BD. Now, remember that distance from, we said in part B that a, B to A is A to B. So you should be comfortable me saying, okay, well, I'm going to just make that AB because it's the same th thing as BA. So this is part F. I just set up the segment addition postulate for this line segment BD. Now, if we look at this segment addition postulate that we set up, and we know that AB is 3.6, and drop that in there, and that BD, and that BD is 7.2, we can go ahead and solve for AD. We could subtract 3.6 from both sides, and we get that AD is 3.6. Wow. So the very big takeaway here is if AB is 3.6 and AD is 3.6, then they're both the same. They're the same shape, they're the same length, they're the same size. We then can say that AB is congruent to AD. AB is congruent to AD. D. The symbol for congruent, of course, is this symbol. It's an equal sign with another symbol on top. This is like a super equal. So it's not just equal as in like it's the same number. It's equal as in it's the same number and it's the same shape and it's the same size. We'll talk more about that in the future. Okay, so what we can say in part G is that AB and AD are equal to each other, right? They're equal to 3.6. And from a geometry point of view, we would say that they are congruent. AB is congruent to AD. So we can say, you can even write down the words, the following words, they are congruent. For your summary, why are there never any negative answers to distance?